We're at the next step now. Now the block hasn't been painted just yet. We are fresh from coming outside, uh, allowing it to get um, uh, dried out. And you can already see there's a nice film of rust or coat of rust already forming. That's part of the gig. It's an iron block. It's going to do that. So what we're going to do next is, is go ahead and take care of the bushings. Now you'll notice something about this bushing here. This bushing, my hands are super white because of the uh, uh, light that's on there, right? But, and I got to show some things here inside the bore, but basically this bushing, if you look at it, doesn't have any holes in it, all right? Yet, if you look inside the bore itself, there clearly is an oiling hole. That port lines up one half inch. So in other words, we're going to have to drill a hole, all right, in this guy to make sure it lines up with that oiling, oiling port here. Now, why is that half inch also important? Well, if you look at the lifters that we'll be using for this motor and for the application here, that is also the proper distance for it to oil up here. So we'll have a, that high volume oil pump pressing or pushing the oil through the port through that smaller hole. And the only thing we really have to worry about here is making sure that the oil gets here for lubrication and for lubrication of the roller bearings down here. Perfect, great, all right. So how are we gonna make this happen? We're gonna drill an eighth inch hole, one half inch up, okay? And with that hole, we're gonna make sure that that hole is lined up on the bottom with that port, and then we're gonna drive it in. And we're gonna use this tool to drive it in. So essentially, we're gonna drill that eighth inch hole about a half inch from the back, all right, to right here. We're gonna line it up. We're gonna make the mark, set it in place, and then go ahead and tap that and drive that into place. Why are we not doing it post? Well, quite frankly, it's easier for us to make that drill in that hole before we put it in there. And uh, once we get in there, that should not turn. We should be good. And uh, we still have to bore the sleeve out, that bushing out, just to make sure it fits that lifter properly. But again, with this going into place, when we're doing that boring process, um, it, it's not going to move. It's not going to turn. There is no glues that are recommended from the manufacturer for this. And there you go. All right. So that's what's going to happen. And we're going to capture that here on film for you to see, let you see how that process goes in real time. As you can see, there is our one eighth hole. We're going to line that on the bottom. So it covers the big oiling port on the bottom there. Then we're going to go ahead and stick in our tool to make sure there's no distortion and we're not hitting that directly. And we're just gonna tap it right into place. Again, gentle taps, and you want to work this until it's very flush with the uh, sides in the back. So you want to make sure that just come, barely comes through. As you can hear, our garage isn't necessarily the uh, quietest when it rains. That's the disadvantage of having a metal roof. So hopefully having the microphone closer to me and the mouth will help out and overcome the rain. If not, I'll just redo the segment or do a voiceover. So here we go. Essentially what we have going on next is the bushings, when they came, and there's some sort of uh, copper or brass alloy, they still need to be honed and reamed to get to the proper size. So that's what we're going to do here. We have this secondary reamer here, and this is a separate one, different from the one we were just using to bore the lifter bores. See what I just did there. All right, now, in order for this to work though, we're just simply gonna cut each one in order, what have you, and go ahead and ream these out so that the lifters can fit in there properly. Now, unlike the last time we did this, there is not a need to lubricate or squirt WD-40 into the holes because of the materials we can do this dry and that's per instruction so we're going to use the same drill 
the same setup we had before and just slightly hone these out so that our lifters will have the proper space to fit in. Here's what it looks like. So we're gonna do this in real time, let you see how easy this is. Nice and easy, not too much pressure. And as you can see, that bushing is not spinning. Not taking a lot of force to do this. Again, no lubricants as we just talked about. It's not needed. And we are through, we're through. All right, now we're just gonna spin that out. Now we never want to turn on this the reverse way. Uh, that's simply by instruction that they will invertedly uh, dull a little bit. So we're just simply twisting in the standard rotation and of course, or that clockwise rotation and then pulling out as we're twisting to help get that reamer out. want to do a test fit. Not a lot of pressure. And as you can see on camera, it's going through there with ease. And we're through. Careful it doesn't bind up on you. So our test fit indicated it was a little tight. So we're gonna go ahead and just run that reamer down there one more time, just to make sure that we are clear and clean. time we're going to do something a little different. We're going to work it just a little slower, giving it time to bite, giving the reamer time to work. And we are probably generating a little bit of heat which is normal because we're creating a lot of friction here. So that might also uh, skew things just a hair with the test fit as well. And we're imagining that any kind of tightness that we're experiencing right now, as we uh, do the second, just a quick shot in there and then uh, get some lubricant in there, shouldn't be a problem. It's not hot, it's warm, but not hot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. All right. That in and bring it back out. Yep. All right. So what we did there differently is we brought it in a little bit slower and then we were able to pull out a little bit slower and that allowed it to be a lot more smooth, even fit as opposed to just driving through. Again, probably the difference between being a um, 
bushing you know, out of that brass or copper alloy as opposed to dealing with that iron. So we're going to finish this up. I'm going to go ahead and put this in um, time lapse and let you guys see this as we move forward. So what to expect next on Mike's Motor Works? Well, Pop's going to give this thing a uh, coat of Chrysler Blue and uh, we're going to go ahead and put our bearings in for the cam and we're going to go ahead and start and assembling the lower end to make sure that there's no uh, clearance problems, uh, make sure that the block doesn't have anything that'll knock the uh, crank and so on and so forth. So we're going to walk you through that process and uh, yeah, things are going to be on a roll here very, very soon. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand side. We'll catch you on the next episode.